Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, how to store your tea properly. In this video, I'm gonna give you all the knowledge you need to know about how to preserve the freshness of your tea. I've done videos about how to age poor tea before, and we're gonna be doing more videos all about storage for aging tea, but this video is all about how you can lock in that freshness and preserve the flavor of your loose leaf tea. You've no doubt seen videos like this before, but in this video, what we're gonna be doing is actually Actually testing it. So we're going to take the received wisdom and then we're going to taste test it to see how much effect certain factors have in the storage of your tea. What we're trying to essentially achieve here is to prevent or slow down the degradation of any tea. Now tea does not have any expiry date. You can leave tea for years and years and years and it's fine to drink, but it does have a best before date. And some teas are more sensitive to sort of degradation or change over time, especially green teas, yellow teas, and green oolong teas. So those teas which are all about celebrating the verve, the vibrancy, and those top notes of the fresh leaf. Of course, white teas, dark oolong teas, black teas, and poor teas will change and degrade too. Sometimes those changes are desirable in the case of aging, and as I said, we'll do more videos about the aging process in the future. But even if you want to lock in the freshness of those teas, the degradation is much slower for those teas, so it's less of a big deal. So today we're gonna to be focusing on those green teas, yellow teas, and green oolong teas. What are the degradation processes that we're trying to slow down and prevent? The first one, of course, is oxidation, the natural biochemical process where oxygen reacts with uh, natural matter and there's a transfer of electrons. So if the, if the plant loses electrons, that is the oxidation process. The second uh, process that we're trying to prevent is photodegradation or light degradation. Very similar to the oxidation process, but slightly different. The third is fermentation. Fermentation involves microbes reacting with the plant, usually in a low oxygen environment. This doesn't really apply to a lot of these teas, except of course for poor teas and potentially white teas. But with green teas um, and green oolong teas, they've been heated to such a degree and processed to such a degree that it's very unlikely, unless you store the tea completely in the wrong conditions, that the tea is gonna ferment. And the fourth and probably the most important to consider is adulteration. In other words, uh, the environment affecting the tea and flavoring the tea in an unpleasant way. So I'm gonna be talking to you about the five factors that you need to consider when you're storing your tea. And I have to say, I'm pretty sure that a lot of you are storing your tea in exactly the wrong place. We'll talk about that a bit later. So what we've been doing here at our home for the past eight months, we've been taking the same tea and storing them in different conditions. Because what I don't wanna do is just give you received knowledge. I wanna test it myself to see whether or not there is a big difference in the end result in the taste. So in front of me here, I have two Sencha teas. It's ex they're exactly the same Sencha tea, but they've been stored differently. And we're gonna be focusing on the first factor here, which is aroma or smell. You want to keep your teas away from any strong smells. Tea is incredible at absorbing smells. In fact, if you take your spent leaves after a session and you put them on a plate, you can put them in a fridge, you can put them in a cupboard, and they will deodorize that cupboard or fridge very, very quickly. Obviously, don't leave it there for too long, of course, but if you leave it for a day, you'll be amazed at how uh, capable the tea leaves are at absorbing aromas. And that is obviously not a good thing when you're trying to preserve freshness. So what we've done is we've kept this censure here in um, a pouch, which we've left open slightly, and this one here we've kept in a spice cupboard. So this was, this was kept with our other tea storage, and this was kept in a spice cupboard with lots of different spices. And we've just left it there for eight months. All of the experiments that we've done today are eight months, okay? So now, let's take a look at them. You can't really see much of a difference in terms of the look. The color looks the same, but if I smell them, that smells lovely and, and nutty and vegetal. And this certainly does smell like a potpourri of aromatics. I'm smelling cinnamon and, and um, some sort of uh, fennel seed spice, a little bit of fenugreek. I'm smelling all sorts of aromas. Now what we did is just leave the pouch a little peeking open so it wasn't like uh, wide open, just a little peek of the, 
of the top of the seal was left open and the smells have definitely got, gone into it. So I can smell the difference immediately, but we're gonna do blind tastings. So Celine is gonna come and brew these up for me and then I'm gonna see if I can taste the difference. Thank you. Okay, so here we go. We've got two centers here. We've she's muddled them up. I didn't look, so I don't know which one is the one that's been kept in the spice cupboard. I don't want to stick my nose in these tea leaves, so instead we're going to taste tea number one. Actually, let's take a look at the color first. See if there's any difference in color. So this is number one and number two. Hardly any difference. Maybe slightly darker this one, but very, very light in difference. Taste is everything. And the whole point here is to see whether or not we notice it in the taste because it's all very well me giving you advice about how to store your tea. But if you don't notice it in the taste, then what's the point? Here we go. Very, very bright, nice buttered spinach note going on. But raw spinach, actually, not cooked, buttered. Um, butter, raw spinach, nice astringency, good umami level. I don't taste any adulteration there. I'd be very surprised if that was the adulterated one, but maybe it's just the smell of the leaf. Let's see. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Absolutely can tell that that one is got some funk to it. This, I can taste exactly what I smell. A predominance of fennel seed. Yeah, fennel seed, star anise, those sort of anise flavors. Those are the strong ones that seem to seep into the tea quite a lot. And I've noticed this before. Oftentimes, when you taste a tea, I can tell if it's been kept in the spice cupboard because no matter what you do, Tea has a way of absorbing aromas. So I have no doubt about it that this is the spiced tea. Um, we have, uh, Celine has written down the answers here and I can see, yep, number one is tea cupboard and number two is spice. That was probably the easiest one. And the reason for that is because this is probably the most important factor of all, which is why I'm dealing it with, with it first. This is the most important one. Keep your teas in a container which is sealed and away from strong aromas. That means try to keep it away from spice cupboards and preferably away from kitchens in general. That was an easy one. Let's move on to the second factor, which is humidity. Why is humidity so important? Well, the amount of moisture in the environment will catalyze those oxidation and fermentation processes. In other words, the more wet the environment, the faster the degradation of the tea. I have in front of me two yellow teas, Huoshan Huangya. This is Amber Mountain in our shop. And this one here has been kept in a sealed uh, pouch with a humidity control pack by Bovida. Bovida humidity control pack at 72%. This one here has been kept in exactly the same pouch, exactly the same area, but with a lower humidity, 49% humidity pack here. Those humidity packs control, they're two-way control, and they control and regulate the humidity. So we've kept these for eight months, 72% and 49%. You can't really see, I have to say, surprising to me, that much difference in the look of the leaves. There's lots of sort of um, similarities in the shades from those lime greens to those darker khaki greens in both. I would say that you can't really tell a difference in look, but what about taste? Let's find out. The brood leaf here, you can see, I, I don't really see that much difference. If anything, mm, maybe, no, I can't really tell a difference. Let's take a look at the liquor. Again, I can't really take, I can't really take much from this in terms of clues. Yeah, very difficult to see any difference there. So maybe this humidity difference from 72 to 49 doesn't make that much difference. Let's see. So here we go, T number one. Lovely, very, very fresh. Got a little bit of citrus in there, a little bit of pear. A little tiny bit 
more texture than I would expect from a yellow tea, because yellow tea for me is a lot about the smoothness and silkiness of the tea. But really, really lovely. I don't taste much difference, I have to say, but I do notice a textural difference. Taste is still bright, meadowy, dewy, morning dew, um, a little bit of sweetness coming through. The beauty of these yellow teas um, is the purity of the tea, the purity of the taste. It really, for me, is like drinking morning dew, that smell when you wake up and you open uh, your tent if you're camping or you go out in the countryside, when you're early morning, if you get up bright and early and you feel like you're ahead of the day, that smell is what I love about the taste of a good Huoshang Huangya. Mm. Now I AB it this way. This one definitely is a little bit drier in its texture, but also a little bit more muted in that fresh vibrancy that I'm talking about. I would say that there's not a huge difference, but if I was to pick my favorite, it would be this one. This one feels a little bit more preserved in its bright notes, in its early morning uh, aroma and taste. So let's see. Yes, indeed. Okay, so that is the 72%. And this is the 49%. So you can tell, well, I could tell it's subtle, but there is a difference, and this was over eight months, okay? So, of course, if you drink your tea within a certain shorter period of time, then it's not gonna make as much difference, but try to control the humidity. And you can get these Boveda packs if you want to get really, really exact, especially if you are living in a very high humidity area. So that's humidity. Keep your tea as dry as possible if you want to preserve freshness. Moving on to our third factor, and that is the temperature. Again, temperature is important because it acts as a catalyst. The hotter the environment, the faster these degradation processes will happen. In front of me here, we have green oolong, we have tie guan yin, um, and this tea here has been kept in a sealed pouch in our boiling boiler cupboard, so the cupboard where our boiler is. So that's obviously gonna have a higher average temperature than this one here, which was again sealed in a pouch, but with our other teas which we keep in a cool cupboard, so a cool environment. You can definitely tell a difference here in the color. These colors here are a lot more vibrant, a lot brighter than these, which just look much more muted here. Tie Guan Yin, or these green oolongs, is particularly susceptible to temperature, I have to say, even more, in my opinion, than green teas. So watch out for those, and um, I have no doubt that I'm gonna spot a difference here in terms of the taste, but you can certainly tell a difference in the look. Right, let's get cupping. Okay, I don't know which one's which. Let's take a little look at the color of the liquor. So this we'll call tea number one and tea number two. So this is the first time I'm really seeing a big difference in color. This one looks a lot brighter green to my eye. This looks a lot more muted, um, slightly lighter color, um, but more muted, less vibrant. This one has a lot more vibrancy. So immediately I'm sort of being swayed onto this side here. Um, let's take a look at the leaves. Again, I would say that this one has a lot more vibrancy than this one. So it's looking like it's a pretty clear, just on observation, definitely in the cup as well. Let's taste. I, I have a, there's a particular taste when a Tie Guan Yin has been stored incorrectly. It's lovely, it's still got nice notes, it's still floral, you certainly would think it's a, a nice tea, but there's a certain, mm, I don't wanna say musty, but a sort of dankness to the taste. Um, almost like it's been kept in a humid environment, even though these have been kept in the same humidity, although I guess a boiler room, to be fair, would probably be a bit more humid, but it has been 
they have been kept in sealed pouches. So, you know, it's, um, it's gonna have, not be that much of effect and they've been kept in very, very, um, with, with very little air. So sealed in pouches with all the air taken out. It's just got a sort of dead flavor to it, a deadened flavor. It doesn't have that bright aroma, that, that sort of whoosh that happens when you have a really amazing uh, Tie Guan Yin. And this one has it in bucket loads. This is full of floral aromas and it's bright and rising. Whereas this one, you can taste it, but it seems to just settle in the mouth. I have no doubt here that this one here has been kept in cool temperature, this one in warm temperature. This is a bit of a no brainer. Anybody would taste the difference. Yes, indeed. Boiler cupboard tea. It's the boiler room tea versus Room temp, although I have to say our dry tea storage is, yeah, it is room temperature, but we really keep it away from any sort of uh, heat that would come from radiators or from sunlight coming through indirectly through uh, close by windows. It's very, very much our cooler area. No doubt, big difference. And this is, I have to say, one of the biggest factors here, especially for Tie Guan Yin. And it's one of the reasons why Tie Guan Yin producers often will keep, or most of them will keep, their tea that they haven't sold in very cold conditions like refrigerators close to freezing point. We again store our Tie Guan Yin in our warehouse in cool conditions. <clears throat> Does that mean that you should keep your Tie Guan Yin in refrigerated conditions? My um, general advice is no, don't do it. The reason for that is because refrigerators, first of all, unless you've got a refrigerator which is dedicated to, to tea, the refrigerator will have food smells. And we've seen before that the adulteration caused by food aromas is very, very quick and very, very easy. Even if you keep it in sealed containers in the fridge, you can do that, but you've got to be very, very careful with condensation. What that means is that if you take the, um, the bag of your Tie Guan Yin or any green tea that you're keeping in cold conditions and you open it up, while it's still cold, then little condensation droplets may well form inside the bag and that will ruin the tea. As I said before, humidity has an effect, but if you've got actual water droplets in the bag of tea, that's gonna really, really affect and degrade your tea in a big way. So if you're planning to keep your Tie Guan Yin in a refrigerator, you've gotta make sure it's sealed away from any food smells. And when you take it out to use it, you need to wait be patient, let the tea get up to room temperature fully, not cool anymore. So just to the touch, it's room temperature before you open that bag. And when you close it and you put it back in the fridge, you need to seal out all the air. You need to try and get as much of the air out, seal it in room temperature, and then you can put it back in the fridge. I would say just avoid it. I would, there's too many potential pitfalls with refrigerating your tea unless you're gonna be very, very careful. So if I were you, just keep it in a cool cupboard, the coolest part of the house. Big, big difference temperature. Let's move on to the next one, which is oxygen. Obviously, oxidation requires oxygen. We've got the same Tie Guan Yin here, so exactly the same batch of Tie Guan Yin. Eight months ago, we sealed this one up in a pouch, completely sealed, left it in our tea cupboard. This one we left in exactly the same tea cupboard, but we left the pouch open to allow oxygen to potentially affect the leaves. The color difference here is not that extreme may be a little bit darker, but there are those dark notes here, so it could be just simply, you know, which leaves uh, we pulled out of the pouch. They look very, very similar to me, but let's get on with tasting. The look of the leaves, really, again, brood leaf. I can't tell much difference between them. Maybe this one's slightly darker, but very, very difficult to spot any difference. The color of the liquor, Maybe tiny bit darker, but very, 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 very difficult to see much of a difference going on here. Right, let's taste. I have a feeling this is gonna be a little bit more challenging. Really, really lovely. I don't feel that there's any degradation in the taste. Honeysuckles, nice sour, sour apple candy 
note towards the end. Obviously, we're getting some vegetal, some green, a little bit of that leaf sap. Delicious, very happy with that. I would not have noticed any degradation there. Very difficult to taste any difference. Same profile, honeysuckle, a little bit of banana cream going on. A little bit creamier maybe. Mm -mm. Once you pick up the note, I can taste it in this one as well. This one I would not, if you had just served me these teas back to back as the next infusion or like you'd poured from this Gong Da Bei and then I'd just given you my cup and you'd pour from this Gong Da Bei, I would not notice any difference. Very, very little difference. I'm gonna take a guess, but it's just an absolute shot in the dark that this one, and it's literally because it looks a little bit darker, might be the open pouch, but I can't taste a difference, and that's the most important thing. Let's see, oh, I was right, but honestly, I wouldn't take anything from that because the taste was very, very, very similar. So what we can say here is that whilst oxygen or having oxygen mixing with the tea is obviously going to uh, contribute to oxidation, that process is actually slower than you think, even with these green teas. I know it's you know, often times that you receive these teas in vacuum seal. Uh, we certainly put oxygen depletion pouches in all of our teas or the majority of our teas to try to uh, reduce the uh, content of oxygen that the tea is being stored in. So it's gonna have an effect, but it's not as extreme as most people think. It is extreme, of course, if that open pouch is in an area where there are strong smells. But that goes back to the first thing. It's really why we wanted to do these experiments to sort of isolate the differences. However, it is good advice to try to keep your tea in as airtight an environment as possible in order to maintain freshness, but don't worry too much about it. All right, on to our last one, and that is light. So we have the same Long Jing green tea here. They were both kept in glass containers, but this one was kept in a dark cupboard and this one was kept on the windowsill. Now London is not known for being bright and sunny all the time. So it wasn't direct, direct sunlight, but there was sunlight hitting these leaves over the eight months. You can tell a distinct difference in color. This one looks much more sort of bleached out and pale compared to this one with more of those darker greener notes. They both have those yellow notes, which are characteristic of Longjing tea, but this one looks more yellowed to me. So photo degradation is similar to oxidation, but it is slightly different and will uh, alter the, uh, not just the look of the leaves and the taste, but also the nutrients in the leaf. Let's see if I can taste the difference. There is a distinct difference in the look of the brood leaves as well. I would say that this one here to my eye looks more yellowed than this one here, but I'm gonna try not to allow that to affect my taste, although that is impossible. Um, so let's give this a taste. Long Jing. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice, a little bit nuttier than green. Now we've talked about Longjing in previous videos. Sometimes that nuttiness is the desired flavor. For me, I like a little bit more of a balance. This is more on the side of those broad beans, edamame, toasted broad beans though, nutty note. Let's taste this one here. So it's the same Long Jing that we used. Mmm. <laughs> definitely brighter, definitely more juicy, less nutty. Both nice, actually. In fact, if you've got a green uh, Long Jing and you want to nutify it a little bit, then maybe throw it out into the sun a little bit. 
definitely, definitely much more toasted broad beans and cereal notes, like breakfast cereal style warmth to the taste. And this one is much brighter, much fresher, much lower in those notes. Certainly big, big difference here in terms of the taste. So I'm gonna guess that this one here has been yet yeah, kept on the windowsill. So pretty conclusive stuff there. Photo degradation, I would say, is a much bigger factor than oxygen degradation. But bear in mind, people, that this is eight months sitting on a windowsill under the sun. So please don't freak out if you've left your tea, you know, outside for a little bit. That's not gonna be the issue. This is eight months continuous, right? So the, the takeaway points here we're gonna go through, but it's very important to note not to freak out about tea storage. Yes, you know, there are factors that you can control and you should try to control them, but you're not gonna affect a tea really detrimentally if for a short period of time or in the short term, you're not storing the tea absolutely perfectly. So let's go through the different factors. The first one is aroma. Very, very important. Keep your tea away from aromas, away from smells. The second is humidity. It is important that you try to control the humidity, especially if you are living in a high humidity area, you may want to get some of those humidity control packs. Temperature also makes a big difference, especially with teas like Tie Guan Yin. Try to keep your tea in a cool environment. Next up is oxygen. It's not a huge deal, but try to minimize the amount of oxygen and you certainly can get those oxygen depletion packs that come in all of our teas. You can just take that pack out and throw it into your tin. It's always a good thing just to try to keep that going and eke as much out of that little sachet as you can. And the last is photo degradation. Try not to keep your teas in direct sunlight. It's okay for you to keep your teas in glass jars as long as you keep them out of direct sunlight in you know, dark environments, it's that direct sunlight, UV light over extended periods of time which will degrade your teas, okay? And that leads me on to where is the worst place for you to keep your tea. The worst place, firstly, is in your kitchen area because there's gonna be a lot of smells in that, that area which may affect your tea. But even worse than that is the cupboard above your sink or the cupboard above your kettle where you keep all your other drinks like your coffees and hot chocolates, etc. This is where the majority of people keep their teas and it is absolutely the worst. First of all, you're gonna be picking up the smells and scents of those spices, the coffees, the hot chocolates, etc. You're also gonna be getting a lot of the humidity coming up from the sink or from the kettle steam rising up. So you're gonna be putting your tea in a smelly, humid environment. You're also gonna be adding extra temperature because of the hot water and the kettle. So it is just the worst place for you to keep your tea. So if there's anything you take away from this video, get your tea out of those cupboards. Try to keep your teas in tins. These are the Mayleaf tins. We're gonna be doing a whole video about how you can use these tins and why they're an excellent way for you to organize your tea next week. But of course, the seal on it is relatively airtight, which means you're gonna control the amount of smells that potentially can go into your tea leaf. It's also gonna mean that you're gonna control the amount of oxygen going into your tea leaf. You can put an oxygen sachet in here. Humidity, you can control using humidity packs. We made the tin exactly the same size as the Bovida uh, humidity pack, so you can have two-way humidity control. Obviously, it's gonna prevent light from going in as well. The only thing you can't control with these tins is temperature, so make sure you keep your tea in a cool environment. That's all the information you need to know about preserving the freshness of the tea. I hope that it helps you. Check out our other videos. Far over any questions, comments, or video ideas. Other than that, I'm Don from Maydee. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea.